Hello all, thanks for joining for my talk. Uh, I'm Yanis and today I will present you how to get it myself around SLOs and how we deploy different use this word uh, SLOs to my organization all the way to production. Uh, but first a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Yanis, uh, I'm from Greece and I live in London and come from a software engineering background. At the moment, I'm the SRE team lead at Paddle, where we are the one-stop shop uh, to sell your software using our checkout and payments functionalities. And I'm trying to bring reliability mindset using uh, SRE practices uh, such as uh, SLOs. So yeah, I started as a software engineer, as I mentioned, by writing code to solve operational problems or working on projects that affect horizontally the organization was something that I always enjoy the most. And this is where SRE clicked in. And as any new SRE, I read the, the SRE books and I learned how Google does it, how other big organizations does it, but that was it. I love the SLO idea, but I still had no clue what it actually means practically. And I was still fairly new to the SRE world without many SRE contacts to ask and bounce ideas. And at Paddle, at, the, at this time last year, we we're a department of 30 engineers. Uh, so we had two SREs in total, we were both new at the role, and no one in the company knew what SLO means. And my immediate thoughts were, okay, we're not Google, is it going to bring us any value? Before I go and suggest anything to my company, I still want to learn more about SLOs. So what I did uh, was, uh, uh, I did online this nice course from Coursera and Google Cloud uh, about SLOs and SLIs, which was really interesting. I worked and did the Art of the SLO workshop. Uh, it was pretty beneficial, nice examples there and nice things to read. And a little later, one was published. I read the Alex SLO book uh, to help me with practical details around the SLOs. It took me around four to five months to educate myself. And you will often feel overwhelmed and you have no idea from where to even start. But I'd say don't overthink it. And just go for it. You know, follow the normal SRE pattern in your journey, fail, learn, adapt, and move one step at a time. So what I did first was to write the three pages proposal that I shared with the product engineering leadership team. I gave them around two weeks uh, to comment and discuss async before I got to a meeting to discuss in details and get hopefully their approval to start the SLO journey. I started the proposal by mentioning that you know, the most important feature of any system is reliability, explained what problem we're trying to solve and how we can use data to help us take decisions by having user happiness uh, as the most important indicator. Also I expect that SLOs, SLIs, error budgets are completely unknown words. So good, uh, so give some good definitions. Also explain how SLOs is not an SLA, but how the business can use SLOs to build uh, better SLAs. And probably the most important is to give a practical example how this thing is going to work. For example, uh, where, uh, explain how a team uh, that is overperforming for a month and underperforming for the next one, for some as a loss, uh, how it will work. You'll have some very interesting chats. And if all goes well, you'll have the green light to start the SLO journey. But it's also important to include a clear next action, uh, what happens after the proposal. In our case, it was pretty simple. SRE team will build the, the SLO framework with whatever is that. So yeah, we got the approval. And now everything was on us. But where do you even start, right? So many things. We started simple. We created a single, a single GitHub repository to hold everything related to SLOs. And we created documentation for common SLA types, for synchronous and synchronous an SLO template that is modified version of the SRE books, a section with frequently asked questions where uh, people can refer and learn more, an SLO process and how you can start your journey in your team, which first was like, you know, identify your user journeys and go from there. And also like SLO bridge logs that we keep a record when we bridge an SLO and what action we take after this. This was very beneficial when we review our error budget policy to see how we can adapt the policy based on the last six months of data. For the error budget policy, we follow the same approach with the proposal. 
uh, we kept it simple and we adapt the proposal to our department uh, needs. And we use templates from Alex's and SLE books. We use the same policy for SLOs for everything. And we review every six months if we need to adapt or we need to create some new policy. Next was uh, the SLIs. So we spent some time to review our existing monitoring tools and see how we can make uh, them SLI compatible. What you will find is that all the data that you need uh, exist on these data sources, but they're not in a good SLI format. But most of them offer APIs where you can query the raw matrix data and transform them to something that is better for an SLI. So what we did, we built a very simplistic service, Kronos, where you can see on the right of your screen. So what it does is we're generating events using a cron scheduler based how often we want to pull an SLI entry, for example, every 10 seconds, 60 seconds, five minutes. And then a worker is consuming these events and querying the data source to create the SLI entry. Data sources can be anything from New Relic and Datadog to your log servers, Kibana or database. And after you have this SLI entry for the specific time period, you, we are going and push this information to AWS CloudWatch using their custom metrics API. So this way we create their SLIs. And yeah, this is it. Now we can consume these metrics from Grafana or anything else that can integrate with AWS CloudWatch. This way we achieved a clean and consistent interface uh, for our SLIs. And on the left, you can see how we can define SLIs as a code is uh, just define a YAML file where you specify what data source you want to query, what's the some dimensions around the names of SLIs and components, and what's actually query you want to run. The next one was the dashboards. Uh, so for dashboards, we use our favorite Grafana tool, uh, which has a nice uh, AWS CloudWatch integration. And the good thing with Grafana is that you can perform all the months that you need for your SLOs, uh, combining the SLIs uh, in the Grafana panel itself. So this is pretty powerful. And again, this dashboard is inspired by the previous mentioned books. Uh, so I'm not going to much details, but you can see like from a glass of an eye, of an eye you can see if it's good or bad. The next one was uh, alerting. Like how are we gonna do alerting with SLOs? As I mentioned before, we use uh, RSLIs is cl custom CloudWatch metrics. So what this means is that we're gonna create CloudWatch alarms that we alert based on band rate over a period of time. And here in my slide, you can see an example of uh, this kind of alert. And initially we have these alerts in beta mode. So we just alert on Slack until we're confident done to replace other traceful alerts uh, and uh, notify our own call team. So how it's going? SLOs is a marathon, and in order to build this SLO mindset and awareness, uh, we did some some uh, you know sharing. First of all, we do lightning talks about uh, what is an SLO, what is an SLI, why they're important, and you know all these kind of details. Then we did uh, all hands in the product engineering team around uh, 45 minutes uh, going through the art of SLO slides, and you probably need to adapt the slides a little bit, but I think it's a definitely a good start. Then we, can, we did an all hands uh, to the whole organization uh, explaining what are the slides, how are they linked to user happiness and different other KPIs that your company probably has in place and how you can relate with uh, SLAs. And the last one, uh, when you write documentation or you make any kind of progress about something related to SLO, share it with the department. I think this is important not just to show progress, but also to take everyone on board uh, in the SLO journey. So how we work with the teams? Uh, SRE every two or three weeks, we meet with the product teams uh, to discuss about the SLOs. They usually we cover things like uh, discover, discover what the user journey is the, teams, uh, the team has in place and how we can create some SLIs for them, what's the appropriate tool to use for our SLI, and also obviously review existing SLOs that we have in place. The important and hard part will be how we'll make the product teams to own and drive these conversations. And my only suggestion here is keep communicating the same message again and again about, about the SLO importance. And at some point, this will happen organically. 
A great example of this SLO advocacy is this nice sticker you can see in my slide that was created from Yata, one of our most creative engineers in the department. But it's a great example how within the product teams uh, you can build this SLO advocacy. Next one is we walk before run when it comes to automation. Uh, learn, adapt, and then automate what you need. You know, normal SRE practices. Be super patient and over communicate SLOs. How they're different KPIs or raw monitoring metrics. Uh, find good example teams and give shout outs. Uh, it's always good to have these advocates from the product engineering teams and any part and any other part of your uh, department. And yeah, I assume the last one is prepare to spend lots of time on this, not just building this framework, but also communicating and repeating the same message again and again. This is how the slow culture mindset can be started from scratch. Uh, it's definitely not an easy thing to do, but it's something that will help your organization to grow with the right mindset. And yeah, I will have done it again. So this is me, and uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, also at Paddle at the moment, we're hiring for SREs, front-end, uh, back-end engineers. So if you're interested, go on this slide sli uh, side or just uh, drop me something on Twitter. Thank you.